Today, we're going to talk about one of the most feared intraoperative complications of ICL implantation, and that is sideways or upside down implantation of the lens. And we'll talk about what causes it and how to treat it. So if this ever happens to you, you'll know what to do about it. I'm Jack Parker. I'm one of the corneal surgeons here at Parker Cornea. Our practice is built on complicated anterior segment cornea cases. We do more than 30 operations a week in our office-based operating environment here in Birmingham, Alabama. So let's get into this video today. This is a patient that we operated on just five days ago in our office, and she is receiving an ICL for high myopia. And we're doing this case under topical anesthesia in our normal operating environment. And I begin by making two paracentesis straddling the eye, nasally, or excuse me, superiorly and inferiorly. And now I put a little preservative-free lidocaine inside the anterior chamber. And at this point, I'm sort of testing the patient's response to these various manipulations. So I know how they behave before I make the main wounds. This is a three millimeter steel keratome, and I'm making this incision temporally so I can put the lens inside the eye. Now, again, I pump up the volume of the eye here with a little preservative-free lidocaine just to maintain the chamber. And I've got our ICL here now. We like to deliver this lens into the eye with no viscoelastic. I feel like that's a little bit better strategy because then you don't have to remove the viscoelastic at the end of the case or risk leaving it behind and then getting pressure spikes after the operation. So we like to do a hydro implantation. This is an irrigating handpiece that I put through one of the paracentesis and then I bring the lens up to the mouth of that main corneal incision and here we are injecting it into the eye. And the irrigator maintains the volume of the AC and now the lens is being injected into the anterior chamber and as it glides out into the eye, here at the end, we start noticing that the lens begins to rotate and now it's flipping sideways and now it's on its side and what to do. And why did this happen? What was the reason that the lens went in sideways? What's the reason it didn't unfold normally? And, and then even beyond that, what do we do about it now? Well, I would like to submit that these lenses don't come into the eye randomly. The injector is not the problem. The problem is the surgical technique. And there were things that I did while injecting that lens that caused the problem, that caused it to rotate. And the first problem is that the main wound that I fashioned was not properly made. The problem with this wound, and I'll show you as I back up the video, is that this wound made with our steel keratome is slightly both too long and too wide. This is a three millimeter keratome, and I'm making this wound as though I was doing cataract surgery. That wound is probably about 1.75 or two millimeters long into the eye, which is a great length when you're doing cataract surgery, but it's too long when you're doing ICL. You don't need a wound that long. When you have a long wound like that, what ends up happening is that the lens ends up getting trapped in the wound. And the second problem with this wound is it's also too wide. Here I am expanding this wound. So really, even though it's a three millimeter keratome, that wound is probably 3.25 or 3.5 millimeters wide. And I thought it would be advantageous to have a nice big wound because it would be easy to get the lens into the eye. But it turns out that this wound being too long and too wide causes problems when the lens is being injected. Let me show you. Here we are injecting this lens into the eye, and you'll notice already the tip of the injector is sort of interacting with the edge of that wound because the wound is too long. And here as I deliver the lens into the eye, it's going in fine at first. This is perfect. It looks like it's going to be right side up. Although my strategy even here, my technique is not perfect. What I should be doing is injecting this lens in a smooth, continuous push. 
but instead I'm kind of just pulsing it into the eye for reasons that are unclear even to me. And as I kind of pulse it into the eye, the injector is bouncing in this wound. The injector is bouncing and wiggling in the wound. And as I get to the tippy tip and I'm injecting the edge, this back segment of the ICL, notice that it gets caught in the wound, okay? See how it's getting caught in the wound here? because the wound is too long. And also the injector is rotating in the wound because the wound is too wide. And when the injector rotates in the wound, it sort of smears the lens. It causes the lens to sort of twist on itself. And that is a problem that is compounded by the shallowing of the anterior chamber. Look how the eye is distorted now because I'm leaking fluid from the main wound because the wound is too big. Okay, so the issue here is I'm bouncing this lens into the eye with these little puffs and the lens is getting caught on the edge of the wound and the injector is rotating and the chamber is shallowing and so the lens is not coming out straight anymore. It's now being twisted and smeared across the anterior face of the patient's existing lens. So that's why the lens came in wrong, okay? Well, what do we do about it? As this lens starts to come in sideways, what's the strategy for how to treat this? Well, you'll notice that I do a couple of things. The first thing I do is I extend the irrigator over the face of the lens to kind of hold it down. And I'm not pressing it against the anterior surface of the patient's crystalline lens, but I'm holding it there so it doesn't flip completely upside down. I'm pinning the lens in the position. The chamber's deep. You can see these little bubbles still in the eye, but this irrigator at least holds the lens in some confirmation where I can evaluate it. You'll notice that this lens is sort of semi-tacoed and the hinge, the fold, is superior, okay? The fold is superior. The reason that that's important is because where that fold is, either superior or inferior, determines how you go about correcting this situation. The way you treat this is you use a second instrument through a paracentesis to interact with the lens where it's away from the folded edge, okay? So in this case, that would be using my left hand to go through the left-sided paracentesis and sneak into that mouth and you want to push the underside flap up and over. That's how you open these lenses because when you see a situation like this, the lens is tacoed, normally panic starts to set in. You think, oh my gosh, the lens is on its side. Which way do I push? How do I flip it right? The way you treat it is just calm down, just be settled, and you just use a second instrument through the paracentesis away from the hinge. And I have an observer with me in the operating room, and I'm about to sort of point that out and do some teaching during the case. So that's what I'm showing now. I'm pointing out where the hinge is and how you treat it. So I use this little Y rod, and I go into that space between the two folds and push from the underside. And that's a very reliable, easy way to flip the lens right side up. And that's why I always make these two paracentesis, one for the anterior chamber maintainer for this little irrigating handpiece, and one so I can use this manipulator. And I found that that's such a nice, easy, controlled way to deal with these lenses that are put in sideways. And here I'm just using that little manipulator just to tuck the foot plates on the haptic edges of this ICL and to rotate the lens into position. And you'll notice all of this is done without gouging the anterior surface of the patient's crystalline lens or dinging the back surface of the patient's cornea. You have a nice, deep, stable anterior chamber without needing to put any viscoelastic in the eye, which is nice because that allows you to save costs on the surgery because you're not paying for viscoelastic and it allows you to save time during the surgery because you're not spending a bunch of time washing the viscoelastic out of the eye at the end of the operation. And further, it reduces the chances of a post-operative pressure spike in case you don't remove all of the viscoelastic. So for years now, we've been using a completely viscoelastic 
free strategy for doing these operations. We don't even load the lens with viscoelastic. There's no viscoelastic at all. And since switching that to that, it's made the operations much better for us. Um, you can still you can tell though we're still learning. I'm still learning how to make the wounds for these cases, much less all of the uh, little nuances for the operation. But perhaps if you're experiencing some of these difficulties as well, this will be conceptually useful to you, like it was for me when I analyzed the video to figure out why these lenses are coming in sideways and what the most effective treatment for them are. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching.